lot of expenses ranging from your textbook deals, your tuition fees, and other expenses that you typically have to make in order to survive medical school very well. Now, would you be relying on scholarships for all of these? Well, why that is cool, it's exactly not the sustainable way. It's good when scholarships come, but however, when they do not come, how do you survive in addition to whatever you're getting from your sponsor, your guardian, or your parents? So it's essential that we look out for ways to make extra income as medical students that align with our individual passions and this will make us more comfortable during our stay in school. So welcome to today's episode of Becoming a Doctor. I'm going to be going out of the usual line that we've dwelt on for the past couple of weeks. So let's talk about money. I'm Gospel, if you're meeting me for the first time, I'm a medical doctor, a YouTuber, and also a life coach. Particularly now, I coach students on how to be productive, successful, and gain mastery during their medical school experience. So yes, welcome again to today's episode. Now, I'll be sharing with you 30 different ways you can make money as a medical student. Now, you'll have to choose the one that suits your personality, your personal interest, and whichever one will be easiest for you to combine with your medical school program. The first I want to talk to you about today is becoming a tutor. So, who is the ideal person to become a tutor? Now, this person has to be smart. You have to have good relational skills with people because people will not just come to you because you're intelligent or you're smart. You have to know how to relate to people, have emotional intelligence, and how to keep people around you. And then also, the next question we have to ask ourselves is, what experience would this require you to have? There should be a background knowledge of how to teach the preferred teaching staff for the persons you're interacting with, how to coach. You need to know how to coach to an extent because beyond passing the knowledge, your students would have other questions for you that you might have to think out of the box to answer in particular. Now, what requirements would these um, have? First of all, you need to put out a notice to persons saying, okay, I'm starting this tutorial class, you know, whatever you call the name, whatever tag you call it. At first, maybe you want to make it free just for people to come and see what the experience looks like. Maybe the first week, the first two weeks, make it free, let them come around. And then after the first two weeks, you can now declare the particular fee you'll be charging. You might have a question on your mind, who will patronize you? Now, patronage can come from your younger colleagues in school. It can also come from your colleagues depending on the niche you want to focus on if you're super smart with the results to show for it i can tell you for a fact your colleagues may not mind actually paying for you to teach them and put them through the courses that you guys are doing even in that particular semester so that's like the market population you have within your reach now the income is going to vary definitely depending on the country where you're based in the kind of clients you're working with if you're working with let's say the private tutorship kind of you'll usually charge more if you're working with group tutorials you'll charge less for that so but roughly research has shown that tutors sometimes make as high as fifty thousand dollars a year this will depend on the currency you're earning in as well but i'm using dollars because like that's kind of the universal you know currency we tend to make our estimates with. but yeah you have that chance of making as much as fifty thousand dollars a year so what do you need to do yes keep your cgpa high work hard be smart have results to show for it the ability to teach, the ability to relate to people, to communicate ideas, to break things down in simple terms for people to understand. And you're definitely on your way to making money as a tutor. Number two, start a blog. Now, up to 40% of bloggers typically would earn a minimum of 100 bucks per month. Now, that sounds small, but it's significant enough to take care of some of the basic needs you would have to sort out during your stay in the semester or session or even during your holidays. Now, um, what would it require for you to have a blog? You need to have a website running. Now, this is not the type that you have to really go and get in contact with the web designer and say, please, I need a website design for me. No, we have automated systems, there's WordPress and there are a host of the others that you can just tag your um, website name along and it's auto-generated website for you where you post things. Now, you need to find a niche. To major in you might want to go the health way since that will both help you during your stay in medical school as you research understand and post more about things surrounding health or you can go towards any other path that piques your interest 
it's important to mention that you have to be consistent in order to reap the benefits how are you going to make money from a blog once your blog becomes popular you start getting you know messages and emails from different brands that may want to put advertisements on your blog it's at your discretion to determine how much you charge and all of that so that's typically how the funds will come if you're going to be featuring someone on your blog the person might have to pay a fee you know to show on your blog and all of that you can also reach out to potential clients depending on how far you go you're willing to go in terms of making money now the amounts you make there's no fixed figure it just depends on a lot of factors so it's essentially variable but starting a blog especially for those of you who like to write i mean you can channel that writing energy into something that would make you more money as against just using it for fun now get an online job there are vast areas of online job that you can get in our present day a very you know we have different freelancing websites like upwork we have fiverr and some of the things you can do could range from being a medical transcriptionist to be a content writer a virtual assistantship a host of them you could do any of these what would they require from you you would need to have a phone probably have a laptop have internet connection and then the willingness to learn the willingness to learn is key if there's anyone that needs certification for instance i know virtual assistantship sometimes you know you might need one or two certifications being a medical transcriptionist yes certifications are online that will take about six months you invest in necessary time and you just have a certificate as a transcriptionist all you have to do is type and you're paid per word you know in most instances per word to type and is a good way to end if you're in the third world countries you know continents where yeah, they are essentially especially for the medical field sometimes when doctors communicate with patients and all of that they will prefer to work with persons that have a good knowledge of medical vocabulary that comes as a priority for them so having online jobs is something you can you know explore amongst many other things i just listed a few of them you could research more on them work from home jobs essentially that's what i'm talking about now um the income would vary greatly depending on the person you're working for the organization you're working with and also how much you're charging at the beginning and as you gain more experience your rates would also go higher so an online job is something that you want to consider to earn more more, more money while you're in school Start a side business. Now, while I was in school, I knew a huge number of persons who went into side hustles while they were in school. Some persons sold wigs, some sold body cream, some sold perfumes. It can be anything, literally anything. Get along with it. You need to know the requirements, the investment capital that you will need. Find something that interests you. Just do a feasibility, feasibility study around it. And yeah, go into it full time and then you can make extra income reinvest the profit you've made and build it up to a point it can run sustainably and you can use the profit to sort out some of your needs so yes a side business would also be of help to you while you're in medical school you can work as a medical research assistant now one characteristic thing about the medical campuses is that you're always going to have consultants attendings residents who are doing one particular research or the other and they need someone who is going to help them either with data collection maybe some part of the literature review as much as it's allowed and permitted because in some cases there are strict instructions that tell these persons that no they must do some parts of this research by themselves it may be in the area of data analysis so whichever of these areas you can work as a medical assistant, reach out to the residents in the teaching hospital attached to your school or whichever hospital is around you. Tell them you will want to assist them with their research work. This has double benefits for you. You can earn and also get valuable research experience, which will count when you're applying for graduate applications or whatever it is you want to do after medical school. And also for you personally, just to improve your confidence. So yes, I've told you the market population you should look out for you know the requirements and then the income is variable also depending on how much you charge how much they are willing to pay the workload the duration of the research these are some of the factors that will determine how much you would earn from being a medical research assistant you can work as a master of ceremony 
two or three persons come to mind now right now as i'm saying is who are doing this in school so a master of ceremony essentially is a person that moderates events it could be weddings it could be birthdays it could be inductions whatever the case is and trust me sometimes just from one gig they gain enough that can take care of them for the entire month or for even the entire session so if you know that you're the type that people always tell you you know you speak well you sound well you know how to engage a crowd you know how to keep the attention focused on you you know how to make people laugh this is something you should be considering sometimes we are gifted with what well, these skills here and there that we just tend to you know downplay or really they should be fetching you money so if you're the type that you know how to talk you like to talk you're enthusiastic about speaking probably you should think about getting yourself refined because every skill you want to sell to the world you need to have it refined before you put it out there and package it and deliver it to people yes at the beginning you might want to co anchor with other mcs where you may have to do maybe a form of informal internship to learn the basis and then you build from there attend public speaking classes pay for courses online do them get refined and start making money from your skill so a master of ceremony is something that you can do if you want to focus on things just surrounding the medical you know field there would always be conferences you would have induction ceremonies there will be doctors meetings right these are places where you could put out your brand and then you get contacted, you state your views and you end. It's that simple. Starting a YouTube channel. Now, you know, initially before I started this channel, though right now I'm not monetized, everything I'm doing, I'm just doing it free because yes, I enjoy making these videos for you. I like the fact that you're benefiting from them and some of you say they're changing your life. So that's a plus for me. I am happy. But the goal eventually is to get monetized. Yes. Now, I used to wonder, how did people make money from YouTube? Why did they spend so much time making lots of videos, you know, and churning out content week in, week out? And only sometime last year, I kind of did a research and I found out that, okay, the creator economy is a booming thing right now, where if you have a channel, you pick a particular niche that you're interested in and you give value consistently over time you are on your way to financial freedom, essentially. There are a good number of the places that are thriving. Some people deal with humor, some people deal with gaming, some people deal with health, fitness, whichever niche that you know that you have interest in, you want to channel your energy towards that particular region. And yes, there are different policies surrounding how the money comes. We have AdSense, we have sponsorships, we have paid promotions, we have affiliate marketing platforms. There are different ways you can make money through YouTube, but it's not easy. None of the things I'm telling you, all the skills I'll be giving you today are easy to um, come by in terms of mastery and eventually start making money. But there are a lot of persons doing it out there and they are doing very well. But we need to overcome that initial difficulty and put our heads on the ground and make sure that we achieve our goal. So starting a YouTube channel is something that will be of benefit to you. Don't wait till everything is perfect to start. You can refer to my very first video, the, the one on the channel trailer. You can see what it looks like. The quality was low. Not really because I wanted it to be that, but that was what was available at that time but now things are getting better and it's going to get even better more than what you're seeing right now so yes start from where you are i'll do a video on the gears i'm using the tripod the lights you know everything and really it's just very cheap it's not maybe up to a hundred bucks just little things here and then you put together and then you have a setup that is nice like what you're seeing currently so yes starting a youtube channel is something that you should consider cinematography and video editing now this video that you're currently watching would be edited by a video editor it will have to be shot by someone now at some point i would have to put persons on salaries to do this yes right now my friends you know can help me but that's not sustainable in the long term for the long run so especially for creators for business owners for organizations they want to put themselves out there on social media, on YouTube, whatever platforms they are getting on. They need these services. So what would you need? 
what would you need for you to be a cinematographer? You just really need to have a good phone. You need to have a tripod. We have these devices that you know, kind of rotate and do all of that. There's a particular name we call it, I can't remember now. But all you need is your phone, some bit of training, and you can learn on YouTube. If you have anyone around you who is into something similar, you can just attach with them for a while, help them with setting up. They get to teach you, teach you some bits of video editing, teach you the rules and the principles guiding shooting videos, and then you pick up from there, you hone your skill, and you start earning. What would your skill be channeled towards? People are always going to have birthday celebrations, there would always be weddings, week in, week out. I can assure you of that. There will be church services, there will be celebrations, receptions, graduations. The list is endless. So you would always have a market within your reach where your skill would be demanded and then you can make money from it. So you can decide which you want to focus on. Do you want to focus on shooting videos or you want to focus on editing videos that persons have shot? Or you can decide to do the both of them. How much do they earn annually? Well, that's variable. Some sources say about $70,000 a year. Now, again, this will depend on the currency you're earning. But on average, and again, because we are using the dollar as the universal currency, we'll say yes, about $70,000 a year. That's what cinematographers and video editors put together will typically earn. So, yes. That your phone should not go to a waste. Some of you have cameras that you're using just for personal use. You convert it into something that can earn you money actually while you go through medical school. Graphic designing. Now, the thumbnail you'll see for this channel, all the previous videos we've done were made by a graphic designer. I'm just trying to give you practical examples. And again, there is no brand online currently that would not make use of the services of a graphic designer. There is hardly any creator on social media that would not need the service of a graphic designer, even for events of organizations, either religious, non religious, NGOs, whatever the case is. To demand of that skill would always be there. So what would you need? You need a phone, you need to undergo some bits of training, you need an application, there are free ones, there are paid ones, they are both free and paid. You have Canva, you have the Adobe Photoshop, you have different kind of apps that would help you. We have the Corel Draw. If you have a laptop, that's a plus for you. It's an advantage for you, but you have to subject yourself to the process of learning. There are color combinations, color modes, and different details that graphic designers will pay attention to. And there are different things you will charge for. Logo and branding takes different kind of pay, designing of flyers, you know, and all of that. But it's a good thing for you to do. You can take your jobs on demand. You decide when you want to work, when you don't want to work, when your hands are full. So everything is within your control. How much do you earn average in a year? Research shows about the hundred thousand dollars for very successful graphic designers. Now you can just imagine sitting in the comfort of your room, churning out designs for, especially the organizations that are very big. They are willing to dole out enough cash if you're very good, and you know they have kind of recurring things that they will do monthly, week in week out. So you might end up just working for two organizations. For example, if blessing comes your way just two organizations and you're well taken care of for the entire year because the frequency of the demand of that skill will be there week in week out you have something you're designing that they are paying for or maybe even put you on contracts where you get paid once in a year and you know that takes care of everything so graphic designing is something that you want to look out for if you want to focus on a niche that is core in medicine you could design for hospitals you could design for health non-governmental organizations you can do things just surrounding the medical field. You can design for authors of books, anatomy, physiology, biochemistry, pharmacology, pathology, whatever the case is, the list is endless. So yes, graphics designing is something that you want to consider. Photography and photo editing. Now, this is a very good market currently, anywhere you find yourself. Again, people on social media, yes, for those who have very good phones, very good cameras, they may not really need it, but then people still do their birthdays, their weddings, anniversaries, whatever the case, the demands of a photographer would always be there. And then it's also a plus to have good photo editing skills to your photography. So what would you need to do? You need to have a camera either on your phone or you buy a special camera for that purpose. You subject yourself to learning. Attach yourself to someone who is already into the business, try and help them, support them, 
I'm saying this so you don't really have to pay to learn. Yes, you can pay, but if you have to pay sometimes as a student, you may not have that capital. So what you're actually paying it is your time and the support that you're giving to them. And they put you through the whole process of, you know, the principles of snapping, principles of editing, while they also maybe permit you to use their cameras for the initial gigs that you would have and also use their studio space because they stand to lose nothing. But if you have been very supportive, I believe that they will be willing to go that extra mile to give you the necessary support you need to start up by yourself. How much do they make per year? Sources say about $40,000. That's the income that they make per year. So have that in the back of your mind. And you might just decide to work on weekends only. You do a few shots, you go home, edit them, and then you send it to your parents and everybody goes home happy. You cash out. Now, writing and publishing books, this is something I did while in school. I wrote about five materials while I was in school. Three are officially published. We have the Biochemistry Companion, Physiology Companion, and the Obstetrics and Gynecology Companion. And there were other past question materials that were not officially published per se. And I can tell you, this really helped me. The current phone I'm using, I bought it from the sales of those materials. And trust me, it was some huge money back then. And so you see, if you're the type that you're interested in the line of academics or you have other areas of interest, writing novels, preparing ebooks or whatever topic that you're interested in, you can put these things on Amazon, Kindle books, and then you just make money from the comfort of your home. But yes, what would you need? You need to have that interest. You need to have the discipline to work, actually, and put in the effort. Because some of those books took me about two years to prepare and I had to work with like 22 persons at some point and we're just gradually putting the materials together. And in the period of COVID, it gave us like an accelerated time it was um, about eight months we put in a lot of energy and by the time COVID was done, the book was ready to be published. So writing and publishing books is a very good way for you to make money. We're in the digital age. Currently, yes, my books are not in the ebook format, but I'm working towards that where anybody in the world can have access to your material and you can earn in foreign currencies beyond the local currency. So don't just think about paper, um, paper, hardcover books essentially also have the ebooks in mind while you're writing your book participation in service and focus groups now different organizations who want to promote their brands engaging service to know okay why are people not patronizing how can this product be better how can we do better and all of that and sometimes they are willing to pay persons to either fill forms online or to participate in research surrounding all of this so you can belong to that um, group, focus group, survey groups, whatever it's called, where you are, and then you end just by being part of the team. Either you end by sitting or you end from actually filling out forms. Yeah, things like that. And some of these opportunities are there. You may not know because you don't have the knowledge that they exist, but now you're getting, getting it for free or because you've not just opened your eyes to those opportunities surrounding you. So yes, you could end from participation in surveys and focus groups. What would you need? You would need a device and an internet connection. And that's all. You can start ending. Now you can become a phlebotomist. Phlebotomist is simply someone that you know does vein puncture and takes veins for blood samples for a laboratory. Now, this can be in a typical hospital setting or it can be in other hospital parastatals. Yes, you need to be certified or the certification process is not so long it takes you learning the skill the principle behind the skill and actually mastering the skill under supervision for about six months some places you have it done in three months and some places some places they just put you to an actual test to see that you have the skill and that's all and if you end par very puncture done it means you can work at a free time and then you get paid for each one that you do and the average pay like i said at the beginning is about twenty thousand dollars per year now the plus for you in this is that it's a skill you're going to need as a doctor so you're actually holding that skill and you're making money through the process and you become very sound with it when you graduate to become a practicing physician so yeah being a phlebotomist is something that you should consider if you have labs close to you depending on the setting where you're having your training done you have hospitals you could volunteer and they might just let you into the team and then you end from that driving uber 
Now, I understand that in different countries, you have different names for the different services that are available. But if you have a car and that car is parked in your hostel, wherever your accommodation is located, and you know you have free time on weekends or within the days, please go register with them. You know, you work as much as you want to in this instance. There's no pressure because you earn as much as you work. So you can decide some days you're not working, the days you feel choked up, you're not going to work. You can work only on weekends. And instead of the car to just rely and follow there and not really bringing anything for you, you could put it to good use. If you are the type that will trust someone enough to take the car and use the car to work and you split the profit that comes for it, that's also fine. So, but by all means, get that car on the road and let the car do some work and fetch you extra cash if you know you are in need of extra money. So yes, on the average, they earn about $38,000 per year. An extra $38,000, I believe, will go a long way towards helping you in taking care of some of those extra expenses that you have in medical school. Now, joining organizations, there are some non-governmental organizations that actually employ medical students to do different kind of work for them. It could be an outreach, it could be a project, whatever the case is, and you're paid at the end of that project. The project may run two or three months, you might need to work from home. You can work from home in most instances. A few times, yes, let's say during summer holidays, you might be required to come down physically to a particular location and you're paid some sales amount of money. No jokes. But again, awareness is key, so you are aware of these opportunities and you are actively looking out for them. Some of them come in form of fellowships during the summer breaks. I mean, across the globe, you have sponsorship for your transportation, your visas, accommodation, and you get a good number of, you know, extra benefits during the process. You have monthly stipends and at the end of everything, you're going home with a rich experience and also going home with a good amount of cash. So working with some of these organizations come with the benefits and then you also have the extra benefits aside the cash of the work experience. This can serve for you when you're writing your personal statement, your statement of purpose and you could also get referrals from some of these organizations to stand for you for attestation of character purposes. So yes, working with some of these organizations that you may not have opened your eyes to would actually be of benefit to you. I know of the United Nations, I know of the WHO internship slots and a host of others that you can research on and they will bring income definitely your way. And then we have blood donation. While this is um, not very popular in some sense because people believe you know, blood should be given free and all of that, but some persons actually do make money from it. A pint of blood costs about $150, depending on where you are located physically. And yes, people, sources recommend rather that you do this like once in eight weeks. I personally think once in 12 weeks is fine. It's most ideal so you don't put yourself in any form of danger. You know, lifespan of red blood cells are about 90 to 120 days. So let's just stick with the upper limits. And that might even, yes, that might even go up to as far as 16 weeks, just depending well, yeah, 12 weeks is fine typically. You can do that once every 12 weeks. And yes, the money is li looks little, but if it can solve one or two issues for you, why not? You should try that out. So yes, blood donation. There are some criteria one is to fulfill, to be eligible as a blood donor, um, because the blood will have to be screened to ensure it's safe, you know, no infections and all of that. So you need to also be watching out for yourself if this is a path that you actually want to take. Blood donation is something that can bring you a little change here and there. Web designing. Now, these guys earn an average of $5,000 per year. The question is, what do you need? You need to learn how to design a web. Now, sometimes we have a feeling like this tech bro and the tech says, you know, they are very, very smart, super smart. No doubt about that. We can say they are smart, quite all right. That's true. But look at the kind of things you're learning in medical school. It's quite difficult. It's huge. The concepts are new, strange, and you're pulling through. So there is nothing that you cannot learn under the sun. Nothing. Literally nothing if you put your mind to it. So what you require, you need a phone, you need a laptop, you need to subject yourself to learning, subject yourself to internship opportunities, be willing to make mistakes and gain mastery of this skill. Who would patronize you? Businesses require websites, organizations require websites, hospitals require websites, churches require websites. In fact, 
there is nothing that wants to thrive seriously in this present day that would not require a website in some sort of sense to function so the market population for you is there people are getting into the whole tech game you know in our recent world setting but then the population that would pro bring you the jobs it's also there it's also there depending on um, the setting where you are and you could work for organizations work part time whatever the case or you can decide to work as an individual whichever one suits you best but yes it's a skill that you should look out for and then see how much you earn at the end of the year but like i told you at the beginning about five thousand dollars is what they are postulated to earn every year affiliate marketing now the interesting thing about affiliate marketing is the fact that you're not investing your own capital you're almost having a risk-free business because all you do is you post pictures of a particular service that your market um, target population they are interested in and then you get the person who does the wholesale or the you know retail services and you bring the goods down to the consumers and you get a commission for every sale that happens that's all you're just acting like an intermediary essentially and this is very good especially if you're on campus because there are some of these businesses that are far in the um, uptown areas of our cities that they may not have the population there that would keep their businesses thriving and booming but because you're on campus and some of these things are things that the young people and students on campus will need you're in a better position to just link them up and then for every sale you get a commission just by linking the consumer with the service provider so that's what affiliate marketing essentially talks about there are a ton of things you can do in any sphere in any business niche there are a good number of things you can do you can decide to go the clothing pathway you can decide to go into food you can decide to go into jewelry whatever the case is the list of possible things you can do is actually endless so affiliate marketing is something that you should consider as a medical person sales of medical school essentials is the next now you look at all your colleagues if you're in clinical classes they are making use of a stethoscope they are making use of a tuning fork they are making use of a pen touch they are making use of a patella hammer sometimes they need hand gloves they need suturing kits and all of that now these are consumables at least for some of them the others are devices that they would use all through their um, time as a medical student you can actually sell this personally or you want to go the affiliate marketing pattern where you have a medical equipment store shop and you just have as a link and you earn commission for everyone that you sell what would you need you just need a phone you need your voice and the willingness to go out there and not care about what anyone will say that you're making sales and actually just push it out there and then you get persons you make demands and you relate to whoever is providing these equipment for sale so it's something that i know a few persons are doing it in school like three faces are coming to mind as i'm speaking to you and they are doing very well they are doing very very well so you can put that into consideration and start as soon as possible now research data analyst i had to do this during my final year in school for myself first of all because my research which is published now uh, i actually analyzed the data by myself and that was a learning process for me all i had to do was go on youtube watch a good number of videos on how to use spss now spss means statistical package for social sciences it's a very common ibm tool that we use to analyze data now after doing that for myself i was like oh why not this is a skill that is in demand and sometimes people charge exorbitant prices for it again coming down to the population where you're in the residents your consultants they need the services and if you're very good at it yes maybe initially you might have to do one or two free jobs just for them to ascertain that okay this person is actually skilled and they kind of link you up with your other friends and colleagues and you get jobs week in week out it's a good niche partly because i will not lie to you i personally found it boring but I was getting the money from it week in week out and for that period where we had that extensive break it was the main thing i was doing so being a research data analyst is something that you can consider now the question is how much do they earn yearly estimate says about six thousand dollars is what they earn yearly and i believe that some now again it varies depending on where you are depending on the currency you're earning in but again we're using the dollar as a universal currency so but that's the average that we have out there copywriting 
Now I'm a copywriter. I focused on the health and wellness copywriting niche. While I didn't go full scale with my skill, I actually learned it during COVID-19. I had a few jobs here and there and then we came back to school and I kind of let it go. But I used it for myself, for the sales of my books. I write the sales copies myself. So what copywriting sibling talk about is writing a sales letter. A sales letter now is like the content for a particular product to make people take action and actually buy. If you're in the medical line, health and wellness will be a good niche for you because you actually have the knowledge. You can look from the perspective of the consumer to say, okay, this is what this person will be watching out for in a product like this. Do your research and actually craft very exceptional sales copies for the different brands that you would want to work for. And copywriting pays a lot. In a year, it's estimated that they earn an average of about $50,000 as copywriters, depending on your location, depending on the currency you're earning in. It can be way more, way higher than that, but for an average, that's what the earning prowess is in copywriting. And it's actually something interesting. You're now going to be seeing sometimes, when you see people make posts, it's just going to be obvious that, okay, this is flawed, this can be better. I'm not going to buy from this person, not because the quality of what they're selling is not good, but just because of how the message is passed. Really, that's what copywriting is. If you see someone that has an average quality product, sometimes the way they will communicate to you about it, you really feel pumped up and you just want to jump on it. That's what copywriting can do. So it's an interesting skill. What would you need? You just need your phone. You need probably a laptop if you have one. Good internet connectivity. Make your research about the fears of consumers for that particular product good command of English and boom. Of course, you have to subject yourself to learning like every other skill that we've talked about and then you're on your way to making money as a copywriter. Offering vital science check services. Now, this just randomly came to my mind while I was thinking about this um, particular content I was making for you guys. Now, you know, vitals would include things like temperature, the pulse rate, yeah, in some instances for the elderly persons, you want to check their blood pressure, you want to check their glucose levels and all of that. So these are, these are things that you can do and actually just charge, you know, a little fees here and there depending on your location. And one thing you want to do before you go on this part is to at least give a health talk, give a health education that will be free for the particular population in question. You don't expect a crowd when you're just starting, but as frequent as you become the more consistent you become those who are coming around would actually increase and if you notice anything that's of concern you just tell them to visit the nearby teachers teaching center the shadow secondary center closest to that particular region or particular location so and this just requires the best minimum for you you just need to be skilled in the art and from like your second year medical school you're already taught how to do these things you need to have the equipment a glucometer a sigma manometer and the other essential things you will need when you have to take the vital signs of patients. So vital checks is essential. It's something that you can make money from because people are always willing. When it comes to their health, they will be willing to watch out for their health and do the necessary thing to make sure that they are healthy. CV writing, writing of statement of purpose and personal statement. Everyone applying for a job requires a good CV. It could be the determining factor for some persons not getting their dream jobs. Now, for you to put yourself out there now, you will need the services of like a copywriter to package your brand very well. But let me focus on, you know, CV, statement of purpose and all of that. I once had to pay for a statement of purpose I was writing for a particular scholarship and I had to pay a huge money and I told myself, I'm not going to be willing to do this every time that I have to apply for a scholarship because there are periods in your life where you maybe you want to apply to let's say 10 or 15 scholarships at once and what you need to put into all of these depending on the organization offering that sponsorship will be different so would you have to pay across so I told myself okay I need to learn this particular stuff and it's really interesting you need a good command of English Yes, you need a digital device to offer this service and then you put your brand out there. Um, the CV is like the portfolio experiences that person has gotten, certifications, school training, tertiary training and all of that in a way that when an employer is looking at it, it feels like this is the person I'm looking for. This is the candidate that I'm looking for. The statement of purpose and personal statements would focus on 
why a person is trying to get into a postgraduate program or into a graduate program whatever the case is but these are things that you can learn and actually put yourself out there people would pay for it week in week out you would make extra cool cash as a medical student whether you're, you're in the early phase or not all you need to do is to have the skill and be willing to do some good amount of research and you'll be very fine with this skill selling digital products now if you're a content creator or you tend to be a content creator this is something that you can keep in mind ranging from ebooks to journals to planners whatever the case is and you earn pretty good amount of money from this kind of venture in a year an estimate of about twenty four thousand dollars is what the average person who sells digital products will make and as your followership base increase as people get to trust your brand more you expect this amount to also skyrocket so you see and then that passive income whether you're sleeping or not across the globe people can be ordering and making demands for the particular resource you've put online so selling digital products will come in handy if you're a content creator or you think about becoming one at some point in time catering and baking i have like three colleagues one was ahead of me in school one was like my younger colleague who still does it actively now so you decide if you want to go the pathway of snacks or you want to go the pathway of food you know of course people would always eat there's no doubt about that all of us we need food to survive people would have celebrations where they would either in the meat pie a fish room an egg room whatever the case is and all of these things will need someone doing them in most instances they tend to focus on within the medical school setting and which is enough sometimes but at some point you start getting referrals even persons outside the medical school setting will start reaching out to you that they need your service they need this and then from there you're just making progress what would you need you would obviously need to learn how to make food good food good snacks you will need some equipment a gas cooker an oven the list of things you would need you can get online and then you put these things together and have a social media handle put your service out there do discount sales and other things to at least attract your first set of customers and you move on from there and the average amount they make yearly is about twenty two thousand dollars depending again on where you're located the currency you're earning and a host of other factors so catering and baking is something that you should actually look into Printing and photocopying services. Now, these guys earn an average of about $32,000 per year. Per year. You need a printer, a photocopier. Now, you know, us as medics, we're always printing out something, printing out a PDF file, printing out a slide. In cases of textbooks that are not copyrighted, well, yes, sometimes we have to, you know, make printings and do things surrounding that so it's a service that can earn you some good amount of money if you're interested in it what would you need there's no special skill to learn how to print you just need to know how to operate the computer even some phones are powered to be able to connect to digital printers and that's all basically and you're on your way to earning money so if you have a printer just locking around in your room and you've not been using it actively you might want to put it into good use and let it fetch you extra income now being a delivery agent if you have a bike you have even a vehicle something you can do you tell your colleagues if you have anything to send somewhere please reach out to me this is how i charge this is my charge rate and they start reaching out to you delivery agents individual delivery agents those that are working alone make an average of about twenty six thousand dollars yearly now that's some good amount of money to add to whatever your you have currently so being a delivery agent is something that you can consider i had a colleague in school who started doing this sometime in our final year every saturday sometimes on weekdays as well he goes out delivers goods pick up goods for people and he was doing well doing really fine so being a delivery agent is something that you can consider there was even one guy at some point that started using a bicycle to offer this service I know some of you guys call the bicycle a bike where you're located so they will serve the same purpose and good for that one in particular was because he didn't have to bump you know fuel or gas to do whatever he needed to do so being a delivery agent is something that you can consider laundry and dry cleaning this has this like an economy that is booming around campuses sometimes you don't want to go through the stress of having to do your laundry yourself having to iron all of those clothes and you know everything you just tend to outsource them 
persons are making money from it. If you're the type that is something you're passionate about, you can start up with it too. You might need a washing machine. I know some persons who tend to maybe wash with their hands initially. You also decide if you want to focus on the medical setting. So you just deal on scrubs, what coats and things used around the hospital environment. It's up to you. You know you need some good amount of capital to obviously start this and yes, the amount they make in a year is about $15,000 minimum, that's the yearly income. So you count the cost, determine what you require to start this up and then you move on from there. Now everything fashion related, we are talking about being a makeup artist, you know, selling things that people utilize for that purpose, being a fashion designer, I know a good number of them who are also doing very well. And the average earnings per year is about $20,000 per year. That's a good amount of money. Recently, I even had to work with someone to make a clothes for someone close to me. And, you know, yes, I had to pay for it. And that's like an extra source of income. Imagine, I imagined her doing that, let's say, like four times in a month. And she's really going to be comfortable, very, very comfortable, especially when it comes to making clothes. That's a very good business to look into. What would you need? You need a sewing machine, you need to subject yourself to learning, and you need to put in the work. Every skill I've highlighted so far would require you putting in a huge amount of work and staying consistent, and then you have clients running at your door. So things around fashion is something that you can potentially consider. Scholarships. Finally, we are back to scholarships, which is where we started from. While I was in school, I knew persons who were on like four scholarships, and that was all they needed. That was all they needed so if you're on multiple scholarships full scholarships good and fine for you you should actually apply for scholarships all you need to do is to sit down study your books have very good cgpas and apply away apply for all of them as much as you can and it's a good way to earn because all you're being all you're doing is you're being paid to study hard so scholarship is a huge consideration for you for those of you who are willing to go that pathway you have the mental energy and the smartness and everything you need to both get it the first time and have it sustained please by all means apply for scholarships now stay true to yourself focus and grow be out there to give value be consistent don't care about what anybody would say. I'm telling you, when I had to start this channel, there were a lot of things running through my mind. What would people say, you know, and all of that kind of stuff. And really, all of that is just trash. Stay true to yourself. Commit to growth. Be consistent. And you never know which of the bread you're casting on many waters will yield significant returns for you. So that's my counsel for you. And it's been an amazing ride, guys. Yes, this is out of the usual we've been talking about and expect more things like this. Thank you for staying put up till this point. I'm going to be seeing you again next week Sunday by 12 p.m. Thank you.